Hello all. We're here to discuss uh, the our recently published uh, paper in, in the American Journal of, Neuro of uh, Radiology. Uh, the header is the spectrum of neuroimaging findings on CT and MRI in adults with uh, coronavirus disease. Our goal was to uh, summarize the literature as well as describe the findings as seen in the New York City area at the height of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Most patients who presented uh, neurologically uh, presented with uh, clinical syn stroke, syndromes of stroke, whether due to thromboembolism or hemorrhage. There were reported cases of meningitis and encephalitis, as well as patients who presented with nonspecific uh, symptoms of encephalopathy and anosmia, as well as uh, those who presented with peripheral neuropathies in the form of Guillain-Barré syndrome, Miller-Fisher variant, or peripheral neuritis. We have tabulated the etiopathogenesis of these uh, cases into um, table one uh, syndromes due to direct viral infects like um, neuroinvasion and endotheliopathy, uh, para infectious phenomena due to the uh, coagulopathy or cytokine strom, and uh, post infectious phenomena due to the delayed immune response and, um, and the complications of prolonged illness or hospitalization. Table two uh, delineates the um, summary of the published cases in the literature of neuroimaging findings and are as described. So the initial imaging of, uh, manifestation of COVID-19 was dominated by acute thromboembolic uh, phenomenon. Most commonly uh, acute infarcts um, were most commonly seen. And uh, there were some papers which described uh, COVID-19 to be an independent risk factor for acute ischemic stroke. And uh, there were other papers which described a cerebral thromboembolic event to be the first presentation of COVID-19. We saw thromboembolic uh, phenomenon in the form of large vessel occlusions with uh, territorial infarctions, branch vessel occlusions, uh, small vessel infarcts, watershed infarcts, and extensive uh, multivessel infarcts bilaterally. This is a, a prototypical uh, example. Uh, we see there is an acute cutoff of the internal carotid artery uh, in the neck, and the CTA of the intracranial vasculature demonstrates a lack of flow in the left MCA and to a lesser extent ACA branches. And on an emergent uh, uh, angiogram, one can see a large a filling defect, a large clot burden in this patient in the left MCA. Hemorrhage is also seen, and these uh, could be multi-compartmental hemorrhages, including extraaxial and intraaxial hemorrhages. Um, there could be low bar hemorrhages, and um, also there were patients who had these micro hemorrhages, as seen in this um, example, where we can see juxtacortical and corpus callosal microhemorrhages. And this uh, was most likely related to uh, critical care microbleeds and has been described previously in critically ill patients. Uh, the underlying pathophysiology um, of hemorrhages was either related to COVID co coagulopathy or a cytokine storm, DIC, thrombotic microangiopathy, and treatment related complications. Diffuse leukoencephalopathy was a finding that we saw mostly in patients who had been uh, in the ICU for a long time. And this leukoencephalopathy as seen in this example where we see a confluent a flare hyperintensity in the white matter and in the, in the basal ganglion with corresponding restricted diffusion uh, was likely related to uh, hypoxia. And this in fact represented diffuse hypoxic uh, leukoencephalopathy. And this patient also has microhemorrhages as seen uh, on, on the third image. You can see hemorrh hemorrhages in the uh, basal ganglion and also in the corpus callosum. Global hypoxic injury was also not uncommonly seen, and that is because many of these patients uh, were intubated because of uh, lung issues. They had uh, COVID pneumonia, and that resulted in hypoxic uh, damage to the brain. So, you know, in addition to the, the commonly expected findings of hypoxia, which is restricted diffusion of the basal ganglion, thalami, hippocampi, and the cortex, we also saw a few cases of uh, globus uh, pallidus hemorrhagic necrosis, 
uh, as seen in this example, where you can see um, susceptibility in the globus pallidae bilaterally uh, with restricted diffusion and flare heparin intensity. And this is somewhat unusual, but has been described in the past with global hypoxia. Cases of meningitis and encephalitis have also been uh, described in the literature, and we have tried to summarize that in uh, table three. Uh, although um, on review of these um, uh, papers, it seems that uh, a lot of um, neurological uh, neuroimaging manifestations have been um, called encephalitis and whether the neuroinvasion uh, is the cause of um, such findings is not entirely clear. And uh, even uh, syndromes due to uh, coagulopathy and uh, cytokine storm as well as um, acute demyelinating encephalomyelitis have also been included uh, within this syndrome uh, as seen in this particular uh, set of images. Uh, syndromes due, uh, which have led to cytotoxic lesions of corpus callosum have also been described and we have uh, summarized this in table four. Uh, findings in the cranial nerve and spinal nerve enhancement uh, were also described in the literature and we have also seen in our uh, set of images which we have shown uh, in this uh, set of images uh, on this particular slide. Also uh, of note, uh, and T2 um, hyperintensity within the olfactory bulbs was also described in patients with anosmia. And although we have not shown any image in our particular paper. So in conclusion, um, the gist of our article uh, talks about thromboembolic phenomenon being the most common manifestation in the early acute surge phase uh, of COVID-19 uh, with lots of cases of acute infarcts with large blood burdens. Uh, many of these patients also had Fox uh, PEs and other uh, distal uh, lower extremity uh, thrombi. Uh, intracranial hemorrhage was also fairly common. And in addition to that, we also saw additional patterns um, like leukoencephalopathy, diffuse leukoencephalopathy of hypoxia, global hypoxic injury, meningitis and encephalitis, um, cytotoxic lesions of the corpus callosum, uh, olfactory bulb uh, lesions have been described in the literature. Uh, with the T2 hyperintensity enhancement, cranial uh, enhancement, cranial nerve enhancement, uh, enhancement of the spinal nerves related to Guillain Barre. And DTI changes have also been described on a single paper uh, reflecting microstructural damage related to COVID 19, which uh, will uh, need some additional follow up uh, you know, papers uh, to investigate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, and hope you enjoy the paper.